Hello friends, welcome to a new free Nibosh IGC video. My name is Sam from Trainers in T-Shirts in the Philippines and thank you very much for viewing our channel. Thank you very much for uh, subscribing to the channel. I've received a lot of emails from you asking for more Nibosh IGC videos, especially the videos uh, about some formulas that you can use to answer uh, Nibosh IGC questions. and. Uh, this is why I, I developed this video. It really uh, takes a lot of time to develop and prepare it well for you. So uh, I apologize for the delay and the gaps sometimes between uh, between the videos. So let's get started. Our, our, our formula today is called the OTI formula. Um, I believe uh, you have watched part one of this video and it dealt with another formula called the uh, MEEP-TC. A quick reminder that was about materials, uh, equipment, environment, people, time and cost. And we said that any question that starts with uh, discuss or explain uh, uh, or outline factors to be considered, then you should use this formula. Anyway, uh, please make sure that you watch part one of this video. This is the, uh, the link to the video and uh, uh, try to watch it first before you go on with this uh, second formula or other formula. And hopefully there will be one more video with one more formula that will come out soon. So let's get started. Uh, again, the OTI uh, formula, this means organization, task, and individual. Those are the main factors that affect uh, many things uh, uh, related to health and safety at the workplace and especially the human behavior. But anyway, there are many questions that if you read and then start analyzing the question using this formula, that you will uh, find it easier to, to organize your thoughts and put it down in the examination paper. So actually, what I want you to do is once you go inside the examination room, just uh, ask for a scratch paper or something and start writing down your formulas on the side so that uh, you will not forget them and you can check uh, which formula you're going to use for each and every question. Uh, because formulas uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm um, explaining to you or, or that I'm showing you uh, are like tools that you can use in different situations. So I want you to have all your tools with you and hopefully it will be fine. So again, back to our OTI uh, uh, formula. This will be the organizational factors or issues to be considered and task factors or factors technical or related to the job being done and individual factors, factors related to the individual uh, or personal factors. And we're going to go th through this in detail. First of all, uh, the organization factors could be things related to the top management, mainly the top management and management aspects of HSE, things like the culture, leadership and commitment of managers, uh, uh, availability of resources, etc. Task or technical factors, including uh, um, the work environment, ergonomics, standard operating procedures, etc. And of course, individual factors, things that might be related to uh, negative uh, or positive behavior, uh, competency, motivation, fatigue, stress, etc. The organizational factors, if we'd like to focus a little bit on it, um, I'll try to make it as fast as I can so that the video will not be very long for you. Uh, <coughs> things related to planning and setting a clear OHS policy, for example, by the top management. Um, commitment and leadership of top management. Issues related to legal compliance. Uh, producing proper training uh, and, uh, uh, and adequate resources or providing uh, proper training and uh, uh, providing adequate resources, uh, good consultation and continuous consultation communication with the workforce, uh, things like stress management programs provided and job security, also monitoring performance, all those factors are related or issues are related to the organization and we'll see how we're going to implement that or apply it to the questions. Uh, monitoring the performance, setting smart objectives and monitoring KPIs, uh, recognition and incentive programs, uh, also proactive monitoring, having a no blame culture or having a management system review uh, uh, procedures in place and performance review in place. And then of course, task factors or sometimes they call it technical factors or procedural factors. It depends because in the examination sometimes they use uh, the word task or the word job or the word technical or procedure. Uh, it's, it's more or less the same. So the job should be fitted to the person uh, addressing both physical match and psychological match. So if you're talking or you'd like to address or tackle the task issues uh, in the question, think about things like ergonomics, job rotation, 
the extent of decision maker that the worker or the employee has, um, machine guarding, engineering controls in place, the clarity of the procedures and the work instructions, uh, the work environment, <coughs> maintenance issues, uh, uh, working time and job design, clear roles and responsibilities, etc., etc. all things related to the task being done. And then finally, of course, uh, issues or factors that you think about which are related to the individual or the person doing the job, that, that's the employee, which is the most important factor. This could be physical issues, things like uh, his age or her age, physique, physical condition, uh, medical condition, gender even could, could be um, a factor. Uh, psychological issues, uh, things like attitude, aptitude, motivation, perception, or competency, like education, training, experience, uh, even home life, background, stress level, peer group pressure, and uh, job satisfaction. Uh, what else could we consider? Uh, uh, well, those are the main elements in this formula. It's the OTI formula, the, the, the organizational for factors, task factors, and uh, uh, individual factors. Uh, common IGC questions that you might face, uh, which, uh, which, which you can use this formula in, uh, in order to answer those questions, uh, we will see some. Actually, I went through uh, the, the standard uh, Nibush IGC exams, the, the exams that are uh, uh, taking place or that were, were held on the standard Nibush IGC exam in the past 18 months, so uh, the past year and a half, and I picked up and selected all those questions in IGC 1 that could be answered using the formula that I just provided. So let's have a look. Uh, a question like identify ways in which organizations can positively influence the health and safety uh, behavior of their workers. Then, such a question, how are you going to tackle it? I'd like you to write down the formula on the side. So think about it. OTI, organizational factors. Are there organizational factors that could positively influence the uh, health and safety behaviors? Of course. Top management commitment, availability of resources, uh, how the, the, the top management is motivating the workforce, etc., etc. Are there individual factors that could positively influence the performance or behavior? Of course. Uh, the training, the knowledge, uh, the perception, the motivation, etc., etc. Are there technical or task factors that might positively or negatively influence the, 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 the behavior, of course, uh, factors or issues like uh, clarity of work instructions, uh, workload, or overload or underload, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All the things, the ergonomics, all the things related. Another question, identify why workers might not report accidents at work. Well, it's a totally different question, but think about it. Can we use the OTI formula to think about or tackle this question? So think about it. Why might workers not report accidents? Are there organizational factors? Of course. Lack of top management commitment, lack of resources, inadequate training. Uh, are there or, or, uh, technical factors? Of course. Maybe the, uh, the lines of communication is not clear. The procedures for reporting are not clear. Maybe there is no feedback. Um, are there individual factors? Uh, yes. Lack of knowledge, lack of competency, fear of blame culture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then identify how induction training programs for new workers can help reduce the number of accidents. Well, uh, I want you to know something about the formulas. You don't always have to use all the, uh, the, the elements in the formula. So you don't always have to use OTI or MEEP-TC, all of them. No, sometimes you can only use the T or the I. So in this case, we'll focus on the individual. So in the induction, you do things that will be related to the individual factors or the task factors. You, you uh, tell the workers about the hazard, you, you're altering their perception, uh, you're increasing their knowledge, you're introducing them to the, to the hazards of the workplace, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, other question could be outline why an organization uh, may have poor standards of uh, health and safety performance. The, now, well, why this is very similar to the question that we just had a while ago. So are there organizational factors? Yes. Lack of top management commitment, etc., etc. Are there personal factors? Yes, lack of competency, lack of motivation, stress levels, etc., etc. And then an organization has all its maintenance workers carried uh, out or maintenance work carried out by contractors. Outline the organization or how the organization can help ensure the work is carried out safely. Now, of course, 
control measures. Control measures could be at organizational level, so providing the adequate resources, providing a safe workplace, providing proper training. And then individual factors, selecting uh, 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 competent workers, uh, motivation, recognition incentives, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then task factors, all the engineering controls are in place, administrative controls are in place, clear work instructions, permit work systems or safe systems of work are in place, et cetera, et cetera. Again, identify the factors that may influence the effectiveness of a permit to work system. So what might uh, influence the effectiveness of a uh, permit to work system? Again, same things. There are organizational factors. So if the company management or the company's top management do not believe or does not believe in safety, then there will be a problem. There will be uh, no standards. There will be no uh, supervision, lack of commitment, lack of leadership, etc., etc lack of resources, and then organization, uh, sorry, task factors, uh, maybe inadequate control measures, uh, maybe the procedures are not uh, clear, not followed, and then of course, personal factors, things related to the competency, to the experience, to the background, et cetera, et cetera. In some way or another, you can use that. But in this question, you can also pick up your other tool, the MEEP TC and check uh, maybe the materials are inadequate, maybe the time is not enough, maybe uh, you have problems with uh, equipment that you are using, uh, uh, and such uh, examples. Okay, another example, but then in here, Nivush actually uh, gave the question or showed the question as it is. So they, they say there has been a significant uh, increase in manual handling accidents uh, to nursing staff in a hospital. Identify what organizational factors and job factors that may cause this increase in this case it's actually very very clear and you can just use the uh, formula and think how to elaborate on those factors by the way the formula you don't just write it down as it is in the exam the formula you write it on the side just to help you as a starter what are you going to talk about uh, uh, what are you going to elaborate on and then another question outline uh, what is meant by the following types of controls and give example of each. Again, this is also very direct, although they used slightly different terms. So instead of task, they said technical factors. Instead of individual, they said behavioral factors. Instead of, of, uh, of task again or job factors, they said procedural factors. So as you can see, again, you can pick out your tool, the OTI tool or formula and start using them. Uh, uh, last few questions. A large organization has all its building and maintenance uh, work carried out by a contractor. Outline health and safety responsibilities of the organization as the client uh, for this contracted work. Now, again, this question is asking about the roles of and responsibilities of the client towards the contractor. Usually people think that the question is about the roles and, respons the con uh, and responsibilities of the contractor. It's not. It's what the client is responsible for. So in this case, again, you'll say the roles and responsibilities of the client, the organizational factors, and then task factors, providing uh, uh, safe, appropriate equipment, uh, providing uh, clear work instructions, induction, emergency response procedures, etc. And then, of course, there will be the individual factors, the selection of competent contractors, uh, providing training, including the contractors in your incentive and award programs, auditing, monitoring, performance, etc., etc. And then uh, they ask you to identify factors that uh, could cause the safety culture in an organization to deteriorate again. There are organizational factors and you elaborate one, two, three, four, five, and then task factors or job factors, one, two, three, four, five, and then individual factors. Outline the OHS matters on which employers must consult with their employees. Now, different question, but think about it. Can we use the formula? Also here, you can, you can pull out your MEEP-TC as well. What do you usually consult? What kinds of matters do you consult with your uh, employees about? Organizational matters. Uh, do they uh, like the current, for example, performance in management system? Uh, what do they know about our current compliance with legal requirements? Are there any complaints? Are there any prosecutions? Have they been personally involved in such uh, issues? And then task factors, the way that they carry out their, their, their tasks or work, uh, the risk assessment processes, the permit to work, the safe systems of work, et cetera, et cetera. And the individual factors, you can talk to them about their training needs. You can talk to them about their personal life even or social issues, etc., etc. So as you can see, you can still use this formula to, uh, uh, to 
try and tackle or address this question. Now, what I did is, is, is a bit funny thing. It's, it's a rough estimate. It's not, nothing accurate. It's not a study. I just took enough time to check, again, over the past 18 months, how many questions in IGC-1 uh, could be answered or could be answered using the guidance of the OTI formula, the MEEP-TC formula. And of course, there is another type of question which is very, very common that's easy. I'm just trying to help you reach the pass mark, okay? So I, I calculated or I counted questions that could be tackled with the OTI, with MEEP-TC, and the questions which are mainly about definitions, uh, uh, questions starting with the words, give the meaning of. And uh, I'll show you the results now, if you can see. Uh, actually, almost 12% uh, uh, of the uh, questions could be answered using the uh, MEEP-TC formula, and about 19% uh, could be answered using, no, I'm sorry, it's 12% using the OTI, about 19% using the MEEP-TC, and about 20% uh, give the meaning of. If you look at, at others, you'll find out that others is 49. So you can uh, roughly, uh, inaccurately, but let's talk about, I, I, I checked, I checked the, the six standard examinations in the past 18 months, and I found out that if you focus or you know how to use the OTI formula, the MEEP-TC formula, and just know all the definitions by heart, you can get at least 50% uh, of IGC-1, roughly, hopefully. And uh, this, this is, of course, 5% above your passing mark, which is 45%. So I, I'm not saying that this is an accurate study or anything, but it is a rough estimate that I did, and I hope uh, it's anything true. Now, what about IGC-2 or GC-2 now, as, the, as, the, as it's called now? Uh, we haven't discussed it, but GC-2 is mainly about hazards and controls. Can I use the OTI formula answering hazards and controls questions? Yes, you can. Uh, as you can see, the control measures or precautions of any task at work could be analyzed using the OTI form. Uh, there are always organizational, individual, and task-related control measures. Uh, and since GC2 is mainly focused on hazards and controls, you can easily use the OTI formula to answer most of GC2 questions related to controls and precautions. Because there are other questions they can ask you to give the meaning of something or uh, outline factors to be considered when doing a task. But if they ask you about controls or precautions, you can sure use the OTI to think about it. Uh, okay, now uh, I hope this helped. And uh, uh, I'll just like you to know that there is an update now about the command words or the action verbs, which are, is one of the main important things in IGC2. Again, I'll remind you, part one of this video, please watch it. Again, here's the uh, link for the video. There is a detailed explanation of the uh, command words or action verbs. But unfortunately, this was updated and changed. So uh, I'll show you now the quick update for uh, the, the command words or action verbs. Now you're left with only five action verbs, either explain, describe, identify, give, or outline. And as I explained before quickly, uh, this, the describe and explain usually will have to write uh, some sort of long answers. Identify and give are usually in form of listing phrases or words, no explanation required. Outline, usually you need to mention headings and elaboration, but I promise because the topic of action verbs and command words is very, very important, I will make sure to produce uh, a video specially to tackle the command words and action verbs in detail. Now, I hope this uh, uh, video helped and uh, I, I hope uh, you guys will find it uh, of use. Good luck with your Nibush IGC exam and please contact us uh, anytime and contact me at any time you need. You can visit our Facebook page or you can visit our website www.trainersinteachers.com and tell us if you have any uh, concerns. Thank you again and good luck.